Tonight on Q2, turning loss into law. But the pain that we have felt, we don't want anybody else to feel. A Montana family aims to protect others from the pain of tragedy. Plus, concerns over coal strip. There's a worry if the plant shuts down, then coal strip don't have any water. Some fear a recent EPA ruling targets the town and its power plant. And a space to be free. We have people that I would consider to be like pretty elite athletes, and we have beginners that maybe just started working out this year. One woman has made it her mission to help others put their best foot forward. The MTN 10 o'clock news starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, and thanks for joining us on this Tuesday night. I'm David J. Montana currently ranks as the worst state for drunk drivers, leading the country in deadly crashes where blood alcohol levels are staggering. That tragedy was seen firsthand in Billings this past Friday after a woman died on North 27th Street. But as Q2's Haley Monaco reports, one family who knows this consequence all too well is aiming to prevent it from happening to others. As we approach what Montana Highway Patrol calls the 100 deadliest days of summer between Memorial Day and Labor Day, it's important to talk about the dangers of drunk driving and the impact it can have. Bobby was a, a real light. A mom never imagines losing a child. In March of last year, my little brother Bobby was killed by a drunk driver while crossing the street to actually get into his sober ride after his 21st birthday. It's a reality that Bobby Dubree's family now deals with every day. The driver was more than double the legal limit. A life with so much left to live. They also had to fight for higher penalties for the person behind the wheel. The driver was sentenced to a year and a half in jail. But the pain that we have felt, we don't want anybody else to feel. Beth McBride and Carly Dubree, Bobby's mom and sister, turned their loss into a legacy. Starting Montana Bar Ferries, leaving cards with powerful messages and a $5 coffee gift card on vehicles left at bars overnight. Just looking for a way to thank people for making a more responsible decision and not putting another family through what we've been through. They're also hoping to bring a new law to the House in January, one that states that anyone driving under the influence with a blood alcohol content higher than 0.15 and kills someone should be considered inherently negligent. It is automatically a felony and has felony consequences. So I applaud uh, what they're doing uh, with this law and I have a lot of hope that it will get passed. Billings Representative Mike Yakowich introduced a bill last session attempting to revise when a BAC sample is collected. His goal, within two hours after a serious wreck. These kind of bills are only holding us more accountable so that we can be more aware of the, the tragedy when someone uses alcohol and abuses it. It's a fight that can't stop. All of these deaths are preventable. Until families like Bobby's no longer have to go through the pain of losing someone because of drunk driving. Bobby would still be here if that man was paying attention. Mm -hmm. If he wasn't drunk, he would have stopped. He would have seen him. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. A 16-year-old boy is dead and two others injured after a crash in Bighorn County. The one vehicle crash happened 10 days ago on Highway 212 near Lame Deer. A 19-year-old male driver failed to negotiate a left curve and rolled off a large embankment. A 16-year-old passenger was declared dead on scene, while the extent of injuries to the 19-year-old and a 15-year-old girl are unknown. Police tell MTN News alcohol is a factor in the crash and none of the occupants was wearing a seatbelt. A Missoula County Sheriff's deputy was injured and another person killed in a two-vehicle crash this morning south of Lolo, Montana. That crash happening around 9.30 on U.S. Highway 93 near mile marker 80. The driver of the second vehicle was pronounced dead on scene while the deputy was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The Montana Highway Patrol is investigating the crash and no other information has been released. A recent ruling from the Environmental Protection Agency is causing concern for coal strip. The ruling would put stricter limitations on certain toxins, some of which are released by the town's power plant. The EPA says it's looking to improve air quality, but many in the town fear the impact it will have not only on the plant's future, but the local economy. Q2's Charlie Kleps reports. 
Earlier this year, the EPA made a ruling to tighten its restrictions on air pollution for the first time since 2012. It's a decision that's become widely discussed, especially here in Montana, as it will have a great impact on the coal strip power plant. Since the 1970s, the coal strip generating plant has been providing power to much of the region, but that has come at a cost. My concern as a pulmonologist is the health effects of air quality. Emissions and large plumes of smoke have spewed many toxins into the environment. Coal strip is not one of the uh, largest emitters. It is the largest emitter. The plant actually does so at a rate higher than any other place in the country, a massive concern for many like Billings Clinic pulmonologist Robert Merchant. If you care about people's health, it's very alarming. Throughout the region are breathing in these emissions and the consequences of that are very scary. Merchant was just one of a number of healthcare professionals meeting Tuesday to applaud a recent ruling from the EPA that is looking to put limitations on emissions containing mercury, arsenic, and other toxins. If passed, plants like Coal Strip would be mandated to update their facilities with devices intended to reduce harmful emissions getting into the air. People are very concerned about what's going to happen next. But not everyone is thrilled with the ruling. Colstrip resident and former Montana representative Dwayne Ankney says the town fears what will happen should the plant close and eliminate thousands of jobs. It, most certainly it's, it's, it's on everybody's mind. I think a lot of these concerns over Health issues are not well founded. One of the coal strip plant's main owners, Northwestern Energy, seemingly agrees. The company released a statement regarding the ruling saying, quote, the coal strip plant is well maintained. The statement also questions what forced improvements, which could cost a half a billion dollars, would do for the plant's future. The inability to utilize coal strip will likely push our already stressed transmission system beyond its capability. There's a worry if the plant shuts down, then coal strip don't have any water. A town worried for its future amidst a heated debate. We need energy, yet we need to, as a society, we need to do it in a way that harms the fewest people. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Now to the weather front. It was the first real thunderstorm of the season for Billings and many other locations. Our chief meteorologist, Ed McIntosh, picks up the story from there. Here's a look at Doppler radar from earlier in the evening when we had the big kaboom in Billings and the thunderstorms moving through. And notice that line of storms extends all the way up towards around Roundup. And want to thank Amy for sharing this picture. Here you can check out the funnel cloud coming out right there. And then also Teddy in about the same location between Billings and Roundup caught the funnel as well. But notice this isn't coming out of a supercell storm, but rather created around the thunderstorms. We call it a cold air funnel and it happens a lot this time of the year because the air is especially chilly aloft and the warmer air closer to the surface from the heat of the day will start to rise. That cold front coming through will help to act as a trigger to push some of that air up, causes some rotation in the atmosphere, and then that funnel starts to develop. Not a big deal. It didn't cause any damage and generally they won't reach the ground, but an indication of one of the stronger thunderstorms we've had so far this season. Look at the forecast details coming up in a few minutes. The prosecution's star witness was back on the stand again today in Donald Trump's so-called hush money trial. Trump's former lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen testified that payments he received from Trump were reimbursements for the $130,000 he paid to keep adult film star Stormy Daniels quiet ahead of the 2016 election. House Speaker Mike Johnson called Cohen, who is a convicted felon, a man on a mission for personal revenge. The former president is facing 34 counts of falsifying business records, but he says he did nothing wrong. Meanwhile, a New York appeals court upheld Judge Juan Merchan's gag order today, preventing Trump from talking about witnesses and jurors in the case. President Biden is raising tariffs on some Chinese-made goods, making them more expensive for Americans to buy. The president says the move is being made because the Chinese government is subsidizing the products, making them cheaper than anything American companies can produce. He says it's creating an uneven playing field. The move pushes the U.S. tax on Chinese steel up to 25 percent, with electric vehicle batteries rising 25 percent as well. Chinese-made semiconductors will be hit with a 50% tariff, with Chinese electric vehicles having a 100% tariff placed on them. The new tariffs on China are a position change for President Biden, who previously slammed former President Trump for taking the same action. 
Finding space is sometimes all it takes to feel like you're where you belong. Pier Vita Studios in Billings is exactly where dozens are finding space to exercise, dance, and learn new skills. Q2's Andrea Lutz found out that's exactly the idea behind owner Sarah Kennedy's mission to match people with their passions. On any given day, people love it. This place is rocking. You can feel the beat and it just gets you into it. Right here is Zumba, but classes held here at Pura Vita Studio off 16th and Grand are set to take it up a notch, pushing these bodies to the max. We have people that I would consider to be like pretty elite athletes, and we have beginners that maybe just started working out this year. And the fun doesn't stop here. But there's people that love the partner dancing. There's people that love the line dancing. So just a place to collaborate and be a community. As owner Sarah Kennedy explains, her entrepreneur studio holds no boundaries. So what it's meant to be for is for your creative vision. With a background in dance and fitness, she opened Pura Vida in 2022, but says it's grown to a space she could have never imagined. For more, we have boot camp, we have yoga, we have Great active, which is Spartan training. We have Zumba, we have dance, we have choreography classes. So it's just very vast. Now her space is creating a space for others to share what they know with Billings. Jennifer Klein says the specs of the space help her cater her fitness class. You're not stuck doing what a gym wants you to do in your class. Better energy, better turnout, better everything. And it's customizable. We have inside the studio, we use the parking lot. Now Gino Savini can bring country dancing to Billings one night a week, same time, same place. This doesn't exist here. Like there's not classes or there's not places that are focused around country dancing. And Kennedy makes the space affordable, which she says helps other businesses thrive too. You know, my, my phrase here is imagine, teach, collaborate because it really can be anything you want it to be. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2. Breaking down the race, we roll on with our candidate profiles for the Eastern House District, hearing from Democrat John Driscoll. And in sports, a Harleton senior who runs in honor of his late grandfather is looking to end his career on top of the track world. We'll meet him.